Hello all. Welcome to video 8 of the assembly language primer for hackers video series. In this video, we will look at how to alter the program execution flow using various instructions. So first we will go ahead and look at the unconditional branching instructions. The first of which is the jump or the JMP instruction. Now, uh, if you want to uh, go ahead and draw a parallel with statements in C, go to would be the exact statement you can compare jump with. And the syntax for jump is actually jump space the label where you want the execution to transfer to. An important point to understand is that there are three kinds of jumps possible, short, near and far jump. Short jump is basically plus minus 128 bytes from the current location in the instruction region. Far is basically when you want to jump to a different segment whenever you are in a segmented memory model. And near is actually between both of them. However, for most of the, uh, I would say discussion, you need not worry about the short, near and far jumps. So now let's quickly go ahead and do a demo of exactly how the jump instruction can be used. So I've written a very simple program. Uh, so we've defined two strings, hello world and call demo, which says call works. Then we have a text section uh, in which this very simple piece of code just writes the hello world onto the std out. This is exactly what we have done probably in the hello world video. This is the exit routine and then finally there is the call me routine. And basically call me has been written in a fashion which we will discuss later uh, more from an assembly language function perspective. However, this is not really the way most functions are written. It is an oversimplified version. We will get into functions in one of the next videos. Anyway, coming back to this program. So what this program should do is go ahead, write the hello world onto do std out and simply then exit, right? The call me section is never going to be actually called because before that you exit. So let's actually go to another terminal and quickly assemble this program. Let's link it. And let's execute it. So if you notice very simply hello world is printed and the program exits. Right. Now let's try tampering this program a little bit by using the jump statement. So let's say we go ahead and very simply add a jump statement here. And give it the label. And in this case, let's go ahead and give it the exit program label. Let's write and assemble it again and link it and then run it. So what is really expected is the jump instruction should be executed and immediately the program control transfers to the exit program routine, which very simply exits the program. And this is exactly what is happening. Right? Value 10 is what is the return status code. Okay, so let's actually now disassemble the program and really see what is happening. So let's go into GDB, load the program up, and disassemble the program. Right? So if you actually notice, 
uh, we've disassembled the start label from the start label and basically immediately we see a jump instruction into the exit program label so let's actually disassemble the exit program label as well and of course as expected this is where the program actually exits so if you notice what is really happening is the uh, assembler as expected would replace the exit program label with the real address that is what is here and as soon as the jump instruction is hit automatically control transfers here let's actually see how this works uh, let's go ahead list the program and uh, actually we need to add a quick note because of a small bug in gdb so that we can trace through the program let's assemble link and then load it up on gdb again and let's go ahead and create a breakpoint let's run the piece of code okay so we are here and if you notice now the next program needs to be executed and if we actually go ahead and print the value of EIP, uh, what we will notice is that the next instruction to be executed is this, right? EIP is pointing to 8048075. That is nothing but the jump instruction. Now let's step through it. And if you notice, we have automatically come to the exit routine. And if we actually look at EIP now, it points to the exit program routine. Right? So what jump has really done is changed the value of EIP uh, to whichever other label location from where it wants the execution to continue. So it's a very simple, I would say control changing a statement using which you can go ahead and immediately change direction and start at some other place and execute from there. Now let's actually quit this program, go back to the presentation. So the other unconditional branching can be done using the call statement. So call is generally associated with routines such as functions, which can be called in assembly. So basically it's almost like calling a function in C. Uh, the syntax is very similar to jump and you know, it's just call and then location. And the point to note here is that call is associated with a ret statement, which is generally there at the end uh, of the called function. And basically you can compare the ret statement with the return statement in C. However, there are some major differences, uh, but just for a simple comparison. Uh, the similar way in which you would write a function and when everything is done, you would just place a return in the end. That is what the ret statement actually does. The point which is very important and different in comparison with jump is that whenever you go ahead and use the call statement, uh, it actually pushes the next instruction address onto the stack. What does this mean? Let's say you're going to call a function uh, and uh, you know what actually happens is at that point, the next instruction which should be executed after the call succeeds and comes back is actually put onto the stack. Don't worry, this is a bit confusing right now. Uh, we will look at it with some examples in this uh, video. And later on, we will actually have a full fledged function, uh, you know, video and assembly where we will look at many of these things in more detail. Anyway, the important point to understand is that whenever the ret instruction is hit then automatically there is a pop onto the stack with which the EIP is restored back. Okay. So let's actually come back here and now let's see how we can use the call statement. So let's actually go back to our demo. And let's remove the jump exit program. Instead, what we do right now is actually use the call statement. And then we go ahead and use the label call me. 
So now let's go ahead, assemble it, link it, and then once again, uh, maybe we can just try running it first. So if you notice, call works and then hello world, both are called. Why is this happening? If you look at the code, first call calls call me, and this is where we actually go ahead and print the call works text. Then what happens is once you hit the return statement and this comes back, immediately the write hello world series of instructions is executed after which the program exits. Now the point to understand is this is a very simple example because of which we have not done some important things which generally should be done uh, while using call such as saving the value of EBP etc. However, we will look into that in later videos. The only point to remember is when you call, call, uh, it will go ahead, change the program execution flow unconditionally to the label, uh, which you're mentioning in the call instruction. All the execution there will finish. Finally, a red statement needs to be there, which kind of signifies the end of the call me or whichever routine. When hitting this, once again, the uh, transfer of control goes back to the next statement after the call statement. So let's look at how this looks like in, uh, you know, the whole disassembly and the whole uh, runtime environment. So let's actually load the unconditional branching program in GDB. Let's list and let's quickly go ahead and create a breakpoint here. Right, let's create a breakpoint for 16. Now let's run the program. Okay, we've hit the call statement. Uh, before we go any further, I think the point we should kind of remember is first, let's disassemble the start routine. Okay. So if you notice, call is actually going to transfer call to this particular address, which is nothing but at the call me label. So we can actually even disassemble that. And this is where the whole call me string is actually printed. So what is going to happen now is this statement is what is going to be executed next. However, let's actually do something else. Let's go ahead, print the value of ESI. Sorry. Right, so, sorry, it's ESP stack pointer. And this is where we see that the value has been set to BFD60A E0. Now, let's go ahead and step through this. So what will happen is now when we step through call me, we'll actually be transferred to this specific instruction set. So actually let's also print the EIP. Now let's step through the program. Okay, so now we have gone into the if you just print EIP again, we've actually gone into the call me routine, right? Interesting thing to notice is if we print right now the value of ESP, as you can clearly see, the value of ESP has changed. Right. Anyway, we'll get into many of these things late in later videos when we talk about the stack and what is really happening. Uh, at, at this point, probably we'll keep it very simple and just look at exactly some of the changes which are happening. So now the EIP has been changed. Let's actually quickly step through the program. So now we are about to hit the red statement. As soon as that happens, once again, we are back to line number 19. That is where we started. And then we just go ahead, continue the program where we will notice that the hello world string, etc., has been printed, right? So very simple demonstration. I've actually left out many of the things such as saving of EVP, uh, you know, conserving of the ESP value, etc. However, we'll look into all of that in a later video. So 
uh, that's all for this video basically just wanted to show you how to use the jump statement and the call statement in the next video we will look at conditional jump statements or basically conditional branching statements uh, please leave behind a comment if you like this video or if you have any other uh, interesting comments or reviews uh, it would be really encouraging for me to produce more videos if you could please do that thanks a lot bye bye